Well, I want to start out this segment a little bit differently. Let's go to that energy market because big things happening in the crude oil trade today. Let's take a look at West Texas Intermediate Crude right now. And with our quotes provided by Bar Chart, my goodness, February now at 80.78 per barrel. That's up to 55. Whoops, now up to 60. So we're now at 80.83 per barrel. Had a high of 80.91 a little bit ago. This is after a low this morning of 78.36. Wow, that's about a $2.5 jump right off of our earlier low of the day. Huge move upward in the crude oil market. Well, you would think that might be supportive to things like soybean oil and corn. Let's find out. In the corn market right now, we currently have March trading three and a quarter higher at 603. It had been languishing around that $6 mark earlier today. Let's go to soybeans. Soybeans, we actually had a sale overnight of 100,000 tons of soybeans that were sold to Mexico for the current marketing year. It took them a while, but they did lift. Uh, it took about an hour after the open, but now you have March up six and a quarter. We're at 13.91 per bushel, about a penny and a half off of our high of the day. Well, let's check out our soy products too. On the soybean meal today, you now have March trading $1.70 higher at 4.18 even per ton. Soybean oil, you now have the March trading 52 points higher at 58.55 per hundredweight. So maybe that crude oil is supportive here. Now on the wheat in Chicago, you have the March contract gaining five and three quarter cents. We're at 767 and three quarters. Well, it's almost a dime off of our earlier low of the day. So it has a nice rebound going on. In Kansas City wheat, we now have March trading 11 and three quarters higher at 790. That's almost 15 cents off of its earlier low from this morning. New crop July up nine. Spring wheat trade in Minneapolis, March 15 and a half higher now at seven, or excuse me, nine, 29 and three quarters. And July up 14 and three quarters cents. Cotton market so far has the March contract now up 74 points, almost at 116. We're at 115.96. Let's bring in Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. Brian, big moves upward here. And it seems like if anything, maybe that energy market is leading the grains higher. Is that possible? Yeah, you know, I think it certainly is, Marlon, and good morning. Um, we're seeing big move here in crude oil. Not surprising to get back to the $80 mark. Uh, I think that was kind of been a target to, for the trade for some time, you know, trade between 60 and, and 80. Um, so, yes, yeah, certainly spilling over, I think, and supporting the corn market here specifically, probably also being a little bit supportive to uh, some of the other grains. And we're seeing big moves in, in uh, the wheat ahead of the supply and demand report tomorrow. I think that market got itself extremely oversold and having some short covering uh, just in case the report tomorrow does show a bullish surprise, maybe in the stocks numbers, but more likely in the planted acreage numbers for wheat. What about the CONAB estimates that Janet was reporting on earlier, where they reduced their production estimate for this year? Yeah, you know, I thought the trade reacted to those with a little bit of a, a negative tone. Uh, we did reduce the size of Brazil's soybean crop by a couple million tons, but there's been a lot of talk of reducing this five to 10 million tons. And so I think the trade was disappointed. Now, tomorrow, uh, we're probably going to see the USDA follow what Conab did and very limited reduction in their numbers as well. I don't think they're going to be real aggressive. They never have been uh, in reducing the crop size here recently. Um, I think it's very likely they're going to see very minor reductions tomorrow, similar to what Conab uh, had to say and uh, make further reductions down the line as warranted. Also, just wanted to point out the uh, U.S. dollar index. Let's take a peek at that, and then we'll take a break on the dollar right now for the dollar index value. Let's go to the March futures board, and uh, currently we are down 255 points at 95.735. That also could be significant today. All right, Brian, we'll come back in a moment, and we'll talk about this livestock trade and the setup here for Tuesday when we come back. I was just talking with Brian Hoops during the break here about this uh, livestock setup, and we were discussing what's taking place, if anything, in the cash cattle market. And Brian, uh, you were saying you were hearing some rumblings about things taking place out there in the country that may have turned this futures market around after a week or open. What did you hear? Yeah, there's been some bids at 137 in the Southern Plains, Texas and Kansas, both seen those bids, and those are being passed right now by the feedlots. Show list numbers came out relatively similar to last week, which kind of put a little damper on some of the cash expectations, but Packers starting to come out here on the Tuesday with bids, 
And those are being passed, as I said, by the feedlots, kind of a bullish tone and caught maybe the futures a little bit off guard. We're seeing a lot of premium being pushed back into the February contract, lining itself up with where the cash trade is going to be this week. So boxes have been moving higher. Certainly that's a, po a positive and a supportive feature to this cattle market. Um, you know, I'm hearing that, you know, we go into the second quarter, we're going to see a very strong cattle market. It's just kind of getting through some of this COVID news and getting through some of these uh, cattle in, here in the early part of this month before we can see higher prices. Yeah, we were talking earlier about the box beef prices yesterday. They were 4 to $5 higher. We'll get new updated info for the uh, mid-morning update here in about 35 minutes. Uh, February live cattle, wow, they're up $1.60 now at $137.85. That's a long shot from where we opened up here this morning. Things were kind of under pressure. On the feeder cattle market right now, let's go to the price table and we'll look at that March contract. We're now up $1.42 at $166.77. Is that the month with the most volume right now, do you think? Yeah, you know, March uh, and April, probably the two contracts that really have the most volume, most interest in, in being traded. Um, so, yeah, March would be the, you know, kind of the dominant contract right now. Um, January, you know, we're, we're getting close to expiring that at the end of the month here. Uh, so traders kind of moving out of the way of January. There's some late hedges that need to be lifted yet. But other than that, most of the action is in the front March and April contracts. Brian, what happened to all that talk about rebalancing in the ag commodities by the big index funds? Yeah, you, you know, we've seen um, a lot of selling in the stock market to begin the year, and we've not seen a lot of money flowing into the commodity markets as a result. You know, maybe, maybe that's attracting some uh, money in crude oil markets. Uh, but uh, corn and soybeans, I really don't think have benefited from that. I don't think the cattle market has really benefited from it either up until this point. But, you know, stock markets continues to, uh, to drift lower, slide lower here again today. Uh, we may start to see some money being pulled out of it and, and eventually find its way into the commodity markets. Let's look at those lean hog prices right now with our quotes provided by Bar Chart on the lean hogs. They have really been struggling here the last few days, and they're trying to hold their own today. The April contract on lean hogs, now just seven cents lower. We're at 84.62. So they have come back a little over a dollar off of their earlier low today, still off of their high by about 40 cents. But that May contract having some issues down a dollar and five cents at 89.27. Brian, good to visit with you again. Thank you, sir, for all the help. Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions. Janet, it's all yours.